Hi everyone, this is the second game in the GM Ram series, again from 1851, featuring Adolf Anderson, who was considered the strongest player in the world at the time this game was played, and it's one of the most famous games in chess history. It's known as the Immortal Game, and if you've not seen it before, you're in for a real treat. Okay, so it's Adolf Anderson as white, and Kizaritsky as black, and the game opened e4, e5, and we've got the King's Gambit accepted and then bishop to c4 often you'll see knight f3 and bishop c4 played early on and white plays a bishop move first to tempt black's next move so we see queen to h4 check and white loses right to castle king f1 with the queen having come out early on though white will be able to develop pieces and simultaneously attack black's queen forcing black to lose time in protecting her so the next move is b5 now the idea here is to give back the pawn to slow down white's attacking play it's considered a dubious move now as there's no need to give back the pawn black can just develop with knight c6 but it was quite a uh, popular idea at the time so the bishop takes and it's been knocked off the a2 f7 diagonal and then we get knight to f6 attacking the e4 pawn knight to f3 attacking the queen the queen goes to h6 where it can keep an eye on the f4 pawn and white protects his e4 pawn with d3 and he's going to look to pressure that f4 pawn now black plays knight to h5 there's a couple of ideas here to continue protecting the f4 pawn and there's also a threat of knight to g3 which will win the exchange as the h2 pawn is pinned against the rook on h1. These threats are easily met though, and black's wasted a bit of time playing this move, and the knight's not in a great square. So Anderson plays knight to h4, threatening to go to the strong square f5, and also by blocking the h file, knight to g3 is prevented. Black now plays queen to g5 with a double attack on the knight on h4 and the bishop on b5 but again this is easily met by Anderson with knight to f5 and seeing as f5 is where he wanted to place the knight in a way queen to g5 again is a bit slow and here if black played g6 trying to kick the knight out of the way and then capture the bishop white would just counter with h4 and after say queen to f6 he could just move the bishop and then if pawn takes knight, the queen can take the knight in h5. So here we are, after knight f5, black plays c6, as he wants to be able to play d7 to d6 or d5, and the d7 pawn was pinned. And Anderson comes up with a really nice idea here. First of all, he counterattacks by playing g4. And after knight to f6, his g4 pawn and the bishop on b5 are both on pre. And Kizaritsky must have been expecting a bishop move here. Instead we see a really good rook g1. Sacrificing a bishop to gain a massive lead in development. So black takes a bishop. He hasn't got anything better. And then we see h4. Queen to g6. And black's got to be careful that his uh, queen doesn't get trapped here. White plays h5. Which is the most accurate move. If you play bishop takes f4 with the idea of playing h5 and trapping the queen on the next move black counters with h5 so h5 for white queen to g5 and then queen to f3 the f4 pawn is going to be lost and black needs to get an escape route for his queen so he has to play knight g8 and after bishop takes f4 white's a bishop for pawn down but he's got a massive lead in development and space queen to f6 is played this again is the best move for black the only other option was queen to d8 then after knight to c3 threatening to b5 and to come into d5 where it can then go to c7 black it will be under huge pressure so queen f6 it is when we see the natural move knight to c3 again threatening b5 and d5 black plays what seems like a natural move bishop to c5 
developing a piece and attacking the rook on g1 at the same time. Now the strongest reply for white in this position is just to play d4 and then if bishop takes d4, knight to d5 and the bishop on d4 is on pre, the queen's under attack, knight c7 check and knight d6 check are all possibilities. But in the game Anderson played knight d5 straight away and Kizaritsky took on b2. Now if we look at this position, black is threatening both rooks and he must have been expecting Anderson to move the rook on a1. But instead he comes up with a brilliant and highly imaginative bishop to d6. Now amongst black's options, he can play queen takes rook on a1, check. He can take the g1 rook with his bishop, but he realises that he can't take the bishop on d6. Because if he does, knight takes king d8. Otherwise, queen takes f7 mate, knight takes f7 check, king's forced back to e8, knight d6 check again, and then queen f8 mate. And seeing that he couldn't take the bishop, he must have looked at queen takes rook check, king e2, queen takes rook on g1, as our rook was now attacking the queen on a1. And then white would win with knight takes g7, king d8, bishop c7 is checkmate. So he realises that he can't allow knight takes g7 and he's got to keep his queen guarding that square. So instead of queen takes rook, he plays bishop takes rook. This leaves Anderson down a rook and a bishop and he's still got a rook on pre. He's got all his pieces around the black king but how is he actually going to make the breakthrough? Well he plays a quite brilliant e5. The main purpose of e5 is that it blocks the queen's protection of a g7 pawn. And white's now threatening knight takes g7, king to d8, and bishop c7 checkmate. So Kizaritsky takes a rook with check, king to e2 to get out of the way of any other checks. And then he plays knight a6, guarding the c7 square to stop any bishop c7 checkmates. So Anderson is now down by two rooks and a bishop, but now he wraps up this brilliant game with a spectacular mate in three. So we see knight takes g7, king to d8, and if c7 and e7 weren't defended by the knights, then the bishop could come in on one of those squares and deliver checkmate. But Anderson has seen a way around this, and he plays the brilliant queen to f6. Sacrificing the queen, there's only one legal move, knight takes f6, and then bishop e7 is checkmate. So in the end position, White, incredibly, is down a queen, two rooks and a bishop and has checkmated black with his three minor pieces. Now if we go back to this position after bishop d6, this move was the beginning of a brilliant concept by Anderson but it does allow black an escape, one that Kizaritsky missed in the game. From this position he should have taken a rook on a1 and after king e2 instead of taking on g2 play queen to b2 keeping an eye on g7 square and then if white tries e5 as in the game then we get queen takes c2 check king e2 and the simplest way is queen f2 forcing the exchange of queens after which black's a rook and a pawn up and he's not going to get checkmated so bishop d6 was a brilliant move but not completely sound however in this position white does have a one game and one of the paths he could have taken is d4 queen to h rook king to g2 notice that bishop's not attacking the rook now queen b2 getting out of the way of a rook pawn takes bishop knight a6 guarding c7 but then knight d6 check king f8 bishop bishop to e5 attacking the queen and threatening queen takes f7 mate queen takes pawn king h3 getting out of checks f6 and then knight takes f6 breaks through the defense so there we go one of the most famous games in chess history and an excellent demonstration of taking advantage of a leading development.
I hope you enjoyed the game and if you've got any comments please leave them below. Thanks for watching.